Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm happy to bring you this pastel painting tutorial. I'm calling this one Whispers of Love in Purple. As always, we're going to learn lots. I have some fun products I'll share to create a really vibrant and exciting underpainting. Also, I will make some new discoveries. I always stumble upon these happy accidents, so I'll be sure to share that with you. And of course, we will be learning and painting in soft pastels. I actually began this painting as something just to paint for me. You know how I always talk about finding the joy in the journey of art? Well, I just needed a moment to break away from the art business and paint just for the love of painting. So here's a little intro from me, and then we'll get started with the learning fun. Hello, I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and welcome to my home studio that I call Monet Cafe. I've been painting from home for years, sharing lessons on this YouTube channel. And I'm going to do something a little different today. You know, I love to teach hundreds of videos and lessons here on Monet Cafe, but sometimes I need to practice what I preach, which is to just chill out and enjoy the painting process. So I want you to just enjoy this and find the hundreds of lessons here on Monet Cafe. Subscribe if you haven't already, and welcome to the studio. I'm glad you're coming along with me today to paint. Let's talk about these products for the underpainting. I'm using Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. These are literally compressed ink and they are so vibrant in color and there's two levels to this set. They come in smaller sets so you don't have to get the big one like I have. I'm also using Pastel Premier. It's a sanded pastel surface that is water friendly but I'll be talking about that as I paint. And of course I'll need some soft pastels. Now I did not use all of these purple and lavender colors uh, but this is a little purple collection that I keep. I used a lot of them but if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page I'm going to go more in into the soft pastels I actually used. Now, why did I need all that purple? Look at this gorgeous reference image. I got this from pmp-art.com. It's an image I've loved. I've actually painted it before, and you can find the link to that image in the description of this video. And here you can see actually how I film. Some people may be interested in that. I have a ring light. I have all these products I talk about in my Amazon shop. Just so you know, I have a link to my Amazon shop in every video. It's a great way for pastel artists to find lots of the products that I recommend and talk about in my videos a lot. We're about to get started, but first I'd like to ask if you would go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this channel if you've been enjoying the free content here. And if you'd like a little more extra instruction or just to support this channel, consider becoming a patron of mine on my Patreon page. It's only $5 a month and you can cancel at any time. I'll begin my initial underpainting with these three sticks of Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. I'm using these beautiful magenta pink colors. I've got one that's really dark, it's the small one, uh, then one that's kind of a little bit lighter than that, and then finally one that's the lightest and uh, brightest in color. So I'm just using these three values to lay down an underpainting. I get a lot of questions about underpaintings. I'm going to make a more full length tutorial on some of the rhyme and reason behind it. But for now, just know that this is gonna lay the foundation for the mood of the painting that I want. And um, I believe it's going to set the stage for a little bit of warmth underneath some of the purple flowers. I'm using one of the ink tense blocks just to sketch in my basic shapes and composition. Nothing at this point is to be super detailed. I'm really just getting the big shapes and the gesture of the flowers and kind of just marking in some things to give me a, a reference um, for laying down some of these ink tense blocks. Now this one is the, the middle value one, not the darkest and not the lightest, and they don't look like anything special when you first lay them down on this sanded pastel paper. Uh, the trees are the dark, well not yet, I haven't even added the darkest yet. Um, that's the lightest value. It's a little bit more uh, light magenta red. And now this is the darkest value that I use mostly for the trees and the foreground grasses. Now you're gonna watch some exciting color happen. This is just a spritzer bottle full of water and I'm using some brushes, a larger brush for the foreground and a smaller brush for the background. Look at that color explode, oh my goodness. Now this looks really drippy and messy, but I'm telling you, I love it because for me, it gets that 
general feeling of impressionism and a loose painterly beginning going and the color is just fantastic look how bright it got after i added the water and by the way because these blocks ink tense blocks are compressed ink they don't take up any tooth of the paper um, so that's neat now i flipped it over because i often like to use these watery techniques when i paint trees upside down it doesn't make as much of a difference with this one but when you have trees where the tops of the trees show uh, the drips you might as well let gravity work in your favor they drip down and when you turn your painting right side up uh, it makes really nice loose tree branches um, again this one it's kind of the trees are cut off so it didn't make that much of a difference but um, look at that gorgeous dark color um, for that mass of trees and that's pretty much done for this stage of the underpainting also too just so you know now it's dry it does dry a little less dramatic but it's still gorgeous now I started to add some of my darks again I want to keep those foreground grasses dark and the trees dark but wait I realized I kind of lost my flowers um, there are some larger flowers in this composition so I just grabbed a it's called a Prismacolor new pastel it's a harder stick of pastel and just sketched in some of the flower shapes now again you guys are seeing the sped up version the uh, full version of this tutorial is over on my patreon page but it's only five dollars a month if you want to check that out now here is one of my discoveries there's two new discoveries in this video I bought these little hand wipes they're actually for kids in the dollar store because I was buying some other art supplies and I wanted to have something nearby just to wipe my hands off now before you get on the environmental um, police um, I'm sorry if baby wipes aren't good for the environment I'll try to use them sparingly okay <laughs> so but look what I'm doing with these I literally grabbed one to wipe off my hands and I happen to remember this uh, video uh, by another pastel artist Karen Margulis who did something similar now these are hand wipes not necessarily baby wipes but hey it worked what I'm doing is I'm using it um, you know it's it's wet and um, I'm using it to wet the pastels that I've laid down now the the ink the ink tense blocks they dry and set themselves in other words um, they they're not like watercolor watercolor it still moves around even after it's dry but ink tense blocks they become set into the paper so I can just use this little hand wipe to um, to paint that's gonna dry lighter it looks super dark right now but it was a really neat way to get in my darks and to have them kind of loose and more blended you know soft pastels sometimes are a little uh, textural but now I'm using there's still some residue of this color on my hand wipe so I just used it to put some more of that purple in the middle ground I did want to mention that with this hand wipe I'm not sure if it's what's considered archival acid free um, and if you're concerned about that don't use it uh, my feeling is I was painting for the joy of it anyway and most of this is going to get covered up with soft pastel so I don't think it's going to affect the longevity of the color that much now I want to show you this pastel premiere product it this is where I found it on Dick Blake the sheet I used was 400 grit um, and I think, think maybe a 12 by 16 and it comes in different sizes and different colors mine was the white color also it's not recommended to use alcohol on this surface you can use water again I was a little concerned with the hand wipe but it worked great it didn't lose any of the um, texture of the paper so it the, the hand wipe did work fine um, so I'll have a link to this product in the description of the video and now to apply soft pastels yay and this is really going to be fun even though it's sped up but uh, keep in mind I have another new discovery that I made towards the end of this video so I hope you'll keep watching I'm just giving some value to these distant trees um, they're going to be lighter in value than the foreground trees and I realized there was a lot of space that was still very light in the middle ground so I grabbed kind of a magenta and a color that's a little bit warmer um, to lay that down and I started carving these trees out this is called negative painting or painting sky holes 
And as you can see, my trees are, are they're not blobs anymore. They're starting to become trees by adding some greens and a little bit lighter value. And I just develop these as I go along. Um, you'll see me add little branches in there. Um, so it really does start with big shapes. Sometimes we doubt ourselves as artists. We're like, wait a minute, I want to paint more detail. I want to paint leaves. But trust me, it is so much better if you just get your big shapes in first. And real quickly, I've been enjoying popping in these little subscriber spotlights. This is from Rick. He says, thank you so much for this information. Just getting back into it after 30 years, found your site, got some Paul Rubens pastels, and I'm having a blast. I'm 62. Never thought I could do it. Thanks again. Well, thank you, Rick. Your comment blessed me, and you're just an example of how many people are learning here on Monet Cafe. Um, so now I've established a majority of um, the pastel laid down. I do end up blending a little bit. I still have some little chunky spaces, textural spaces in there. So here I'm using a piece of pipe foam insulation. It's a great little tool for blending on surfaces that are really sanded. And all of this to be able to finally add some grasses. Um, my grasses are just going to be very loose and painterly at this stage, especially. Um, I'm getting in some of this pretty purple for some of the shadowy colors in the grasses, also in the shadowy parts underneath those trees. And purple just gave that little um, bit of uh, interest to the deep parts of the grasses. Now I'm going to be using some really fun purples. This one, I don't even know what pastel it was, but it was just a really pretty in between purple and magenta. Now I'm going to start tackling these flowers. I have never painted this type of flower before. If you check out the reference image that is in um, the description of this video from pmp-art.com, um, the flowers are, they're like round and they have these little spiky things that come out in a radius, like a sphere. Um, and then they have these little balls on the ends of the spikes. I've never painted a flower like this before. So it was sort of an experiment. I found the color was really interesting. I didn't quite have the colors that I saw in the image. Um, so I ended up using a color that was a little bit too red to me, a little too magenta. Um, the little balls that are on the ends kind of have a little green uh, tint to them. Um, so I wasn't super happy with that red kind of color. It was a little too warm for the rest of the painting. So towards the end of this video, you'll see my other trick for changing the color of those flowers. And it worked really great. Um, using some pretty cool greens uh, for these grasses. And I'm just making gestural marks with grasses. Uh, when I was first beginning painting, all of my grasses looked the same. They all were skinny. They, they might be directional, but they didn't have any real variety. Um, I noticed in this image, there was a lot of the grasses in the foreground that kind of looked like corn stalks. So I tried to emulate that. So now things are starting to come together. Again, um, it is fast, but um, hopefully you're getting some good information here. Uh, so I loved this pretty periwinkle color. I set this little clip to real time so you can kind of see the normal speed of me working. But isn't that a beauty, beautiful uh, periwinkle blue? I thought it was perfect for some of those uh, little purple flowers that kind of were sitting on top. And um, this is starting to come along now. I'm beginning to add some uh, lighter greens. And I usually reserve my lightest values towards the end of the painting. This was another pretty blue that I add to some of the tops of the flowers. I'm still at this point not loving the color of the larger spiky flowers, but you're gonna see my second trick right now after I add some of these white flowers. So what I thought I'd do is use a fixative. I don't love fixatives in general, but I like this Degas fixative. It's made by Spectrafix and it is natural, uh, no chemicals in it. I love that. So what I'm doing, I'm holding a paper towel up. I'm spraying some of it on the lower section. Um, it, go, it looks really dark right now, but it doesn't dry this dark. What it's going to do is it's gonna give me a little more layering ability. Because I specifically wanted to work on these flowers, I used the fixative with a paper towel and I just tore a hole in it and I just, moved the paper towel around and sprayed some of the different flowers. Again, it's gonna look super dark right now, but you're gonna see me use a blow dryer in a minute and you'll see they, they lighten up almost to the same color they were. 
Um, again, why do this? I want to change these colors and I've kind of gotten a lot of pastel down. They, the pastels may not layer as bright um, and vividly as I want them to. So now you see how it lightened back up again? So now I've got a little bit of a, a way to add more color. Um, I'm just adding a bit more purple to it to tone down that red. And it made it, for me, it made it feel more harmonious. Um, those flowers didn't stand out so much. Sometimes you want to create a little color contrast. Um, it causes you to notice something. But because I wasn't loving that color, I didn't want to notice it that much. Um, so this just kind of caused these flowers to um, fit the scene a little bit better for me. I don't know. You may have liked the flowers a bit more magenta. Let me know in the comments. Did you like them before? Do you like them now? Well, maybe wait till you see the final painting. So I added a little bit more of some of the periwinkle colors. Sorry for me getting so close to my painting um, and my crazy hair, but um, it's starting to come together. And again, I did this painting for the joy of it. Now, you know me, I thought, why not film myself? You know why I do that? I always think if I don't film myself one time, I'm gonna end up creating the best painting I've ever created. So I always turn the camera on, but I literally painted this just for the experience. I had some good Christian music on. I had my essential oils going. That's what I always recommend for you guys to do. And um, it was really something that I needed. This art business gets crazy. Um, by the way, we're coming into a new month soon. April is gonna have a really neat theme in the Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook and on my Patreon page. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, I hope you will. I noticed there's about, um, 60% of the people who view my videos often haven't yet subscribed. So click that subscribe button. That'll be awesome. It, it helps these videos get seen to more people who are really looking for some free art instruction. So here's a close up. You can see little hints of some of that magenta, which is okay. A little hint is okay. And a little bit of the distance and the sky holes behind the trees. And this one was overall just a blessing for me, like a breath of fresh air. And you guys might know if you've watched my channel, I love purple, it's pretty obvious. So I hope you liked this and I hope you'll try it. If you do, you can tag me. If you share on Instagram, you can find me at all of the links on this end screen. And by the way, I just looked at how many videos I have on Monet Cafe. It's 840 videos. Now, some of those are unlisted because they're Patreon videos, but you got plenty of content to keep you busy. And as always, you bless me. So God bless you and happy painting.